This is Bill Keegan with Durham Geo Slope Indicator. This is segment two of the permeability panel. Earlier we covered the de-airing controls and the master controls for the, for the S500. We did not cover the meter and we're going to go through the regulators and how to use the auto load and the bridge. Each burette has its individual burette. In order to select the burettes, the pressure, you go to regulator one, increase your pressure, and it'll show here. Same thing with number two. Right now the auto load is off, the bridge is off. So that indicates that these are individual uh, burettes, individual all the way across. You increase your pressure. Same thing for number three. Always have these on vent unless you're doing a sample. If you're, if you're actually doing a sample, leave this on pressure. That way the pressure is applied all the way down. What I'm going to cover now is your auto load and your bridge. In order to saturate a sample, you need to make sure that two and three, the head and the tail, are the same pressure. So if the, the water comes in from both sides and saturates from both ends. It's quicker that way. You can so it's right from one end. It takes a little more time. What you're going to do is you're first you're going to set your confining pressure. You go to regulator one. I'm going to set up a 5 PSI differential. Now with the differential set, what's going to happen is this regulator is going to follow number two when the auto load is on. I'm going to turn the auto load on Regulator 2 is at zero. As I increase regulator 2, regulator 1 will stay 5 psi above it all the time. That's what the auto load does. It's very functional, very friendly to use. Now I'm going to increase 2 to my first pressure of 15 psi. We'll go back and check my confining pressure. And as you can see, it follows up. Occasionally, you do have to adjust it. I will tell you this is in metric, so it's a, it's a lot more sensitive than normal. Regulator 2, 15 PSI. Regulator 1 should be right at 20. Makes it a lot simpler, a lot easier to use. You don't have to worry about adjusting your pressures. Now, the bridge incorporates number two and comes through here and goes down number three. You shut number three off, turn your bridge on, turn pressures on, and now what I've got is I've got a confining pressure of 20, regulator two is at 15, and regulator three is also 15. So this one regulator controls your whole saturation process. When you increase your pressures, you shut off all your, your valves on the bottom, valves on the cell. You increase number two, and it increases two and three, and also keeps your five PSI differential. So the only valve during saturation you need to use is, this, is number two. Very nice setup. Okay, we're going to bend everything. Turn everything off. I'm going to show how to fill the burettes and how to de-air the burettes. I'm not going to uh, leave the vacuum pump on too long because it's extremely noisy. In order to fill the burettes through the de-airing controls, you turn the de-airing controls to fill. Make sure your burette is on vent. If this is on pressure, you're going to force the water back into the de-airing tank. You make sure it's on vent. You turn the de-airing controls to fill and then you apply water through the water fill valve. Now when you're de-airing the, the burette, don't fill it 
totally full because it will be rising with the vacuum and it will get into your vacuum pump. Same thing with all valves. Make sure it's on vent. Fill it. Let's turn this into vent. Fill it. Now, initially when you start using the panel, you will have air pockets in the back. They will eventually disappear. But de-airing of the burette, you will have to do for a while until you get those air pockets out. Now I'm going to turn on the vacuum pump just for a second. As you can see, the, the, the vacuum gauge is showing about 29 inches. When I apply a vacuum to this, you'll notice the pressure comes up, or the vacuum comes up, water comes up. <coughs> do it slowly. Do not do it quickly. You do each one of them that way. This may take about 25 to 30 minutes initial time. Be careful with your vacuum. You don't want that in your vacuum pump. You should have a um, interface between the two, a water trap. Now, of course, you're going to be using de-aired water through your de-airing tank, so it's not going to be as, as bad as this. Our de-airing tank is basically tap water. We use this setup for testing only. <coughs> Let's okay, this is going to take a little while, so I'm not going to continue. But that is the process for de-airing your burettes. It also de-airs the, the tubing in the back, and if you need to, it'll de-air the controls all the way down to this valve right here. Rule of thumb, when you everything is off, all valves should be up, except for your, your bottom valves which go to your cells. 